the conceptions of ourselves as beings that are separate from divine life is the root of all of our troubles. Today I'm going to actually share a little bit about this singular union or this dual union that you can participate in that will absolutely metamorphosize or transform your body, your mind, and your world. Man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You see, one of the crazy things, one of the things I actually really like about the Bible is that it really is this metaphysical book. I mean, the Bible's been talking about the entirety of the Bible, both and even extra biblical passages of Scripture, are like full of neuroplasticity. I mean, the Bible was talking about neuroplasticity way before neuroplasticity was a thing. There's a passage of Scripture in the Bible that talks about how some sheep were led to a water and uh, this dude wanted to have speckled sheep and so he put branches in the trough and when the sheep were drinking from the trough they saw the reflection and as a result of seeing the refle reflection as speckled they started to have speckled babies as a man thinking within his heart so is he i mean that stuff works for sheep it works it'll work if it'll work for sheep it'll work for you the problem is we haven't learned how to think from our heart. We've been really busy. Humanity has been for a long time thinking from our analytical mind, AKA Satan. See, the analytical mind is the voice of the accuser. Matter of fact, it, when you talk to a scientist about beta brain waves, a scientist will tell you that beta brain waves is the voice of accusation in your mind. In other words, like everything that is continually accusing ourselves that we're continually accusing ourselves of or every time we face doubt every time we face fear every time we're we're feeling judgment we're feeling condemnation we're feeling shame this is the voice of the beta brain waves or anal the analytical mind the bible would call the analytical mind the devil and it's the devil that comes out and says hey man if you do this you could be like god which is where if you Hey, Adam, hey, Christ, hey, this divine being, this Edenian, if you just do this, if you just participate in this thing, this outward thing, and you start to focus on this outward life, then you could be like God. Like, look around you, man. You could be just like God. And it's this concept of ourselves as beings that are separate from the divine that have caused all the trouble, all the issues in our life. And as a result of that, what we've done is, we've been working really hard doing outward tasks, planting outward seed, like, uh, you know, investing our finances to try to get finances and investing our physical form to try to build our physical form. But it's actually been proven scientifically through countless numbers of studies that if you like, meditate on a matter of fact there was this one study that was done about neuroplasticity and they actually took 100 people and 50 people were given exercise programs to do every single day the other 50 people were just during that hour where the 50 did exercise these 50 people just meditated on doing exercise they had a very specific meditation that they would go through doing in their mind, picturing in their mind the exact same exercises that were being done by the other 50. And it was shown that the 50 that were doing the exercise raised their uh, physical muscle mass by like 25%, and those that were meditating raised their physical mu muscle mass by like 18, 19%. So almost this exact same production came from an inward man of an inward visualization they were creating their own story within and it was manifesting here instead of just trying to get it here and then being frustrated because i'm not seeing the results that i want to see i'm investing money but i'm not seeing the results that i want to see so now i'm frustrated and i'm angry but i'm not thinking wealthy here if you want wealth think wealthy 
but not just here. So the problem is that the right here between your eyes, this prefrontal lobe here is where the idea of self is located in your brain. And this is where all the problem comes in. We have this picture of ourself as uh, subconsciously, this picture of ourself that says, I'm poor. So if you grow up poor, you continue to manifest poverty. If you grow up middle class, you continue to manifest middle class. If you grow up wealthy, you, you typically manifest wealth. And the reason why is because what we see, we manifest. We are literally devolving. Uh, the evolution process kind of looks like this. Uh, animals will come along and they are continually being challenged. So if a little rabbit is running away from a leopard, it has to get faster to be able to survive. And so as a result of continually working harder, 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 it slowly begins to develop generation after generation the muscle mass and the ability to escape the leopard. But the leopard's doing the exact same thing. And as the hair gets faster, the leopard gets faster. And there's this entire uh, evolving of a species. We adapt. Our muscles change, our brain waves change, muscles change, our physical forms change, the world changes. And it all begins with typically an outward change. Something has to move us outside of our comfort zone. But, but, and here's a big but, what really happens is if we're doing that, but subconsciously we believe that we can't become strong. So you're at the gym and you're working hard, but in your subconscious, you don't think, you really don't believe that you can ever be that big. And so in other words, it's called small man syndrome. I used to go to the gym all the time and I always thought of myself as very a small person. I grew up small. I was always one of the smallest on my football team, one of the smallest on my basketball team. And it made me work really hard and I really appreciated it when I did begin to catch up with everyone else. The problem was I had developed this small man syndrome where even when I was actually a big guy and people would come up to me in the gym and they'd be like, what's up big man? I still felt small. And so I would look at people that were actually way smaller than me, way, way weaker than I was, but I saw myself as less than them. And as a result, I wasn't manifesting all the results that I really wanted to manifest. I mean, the sky was the limit, but I had capped myself in my thinking. So in my mind, in my rational mind, I'm like, if I work hard enough, I can become this. But my subconscious mind was actually sabotaging that because my subconscious mind had had been conditioned to think small. We are devolving as a species because A, we're comfortable, and, and B, we're no longer thinking in our heart what is good, what is lovely, what is just, what is pure. We're thinking with our rational brain as separate beings from divine source. To switch that, we have to learn how to let go of this self that exists in our brain and come here to the heart. Come here to the heart. Forget the former things, nor consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. To do a new thing, we have to generate new brain waves. Uh, the thing that you focus on is where your energy goes. When your energy goes there, as soon, as matter of fact, as soon as you have a thought, your entire body mind, body, and everything around you ultimately begin to shift in some way. If you focus on your hand right now, and then focus on, you touch your thumb to your pinky, thumb to your index finger, thumb to your ring finger, thumb to your middle finger, and then you repeat that pattern over and over and over, right? So when we repeat that pattern, what we actually end up with is our brain is firing new neurons. It's actually working out some new a new way of doing something that we haven't done, but it gets easier and easier and easier until you can do it without even thinking about it. Boom, 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 boom. It's easy. But it actually required when you first started to really focus on that thing. What happens is your mind starts to release all these beautiful chemicals and it starts to fire and open up new neural pathways. And next thing you know, your entire physiology is actually being changed. Now I want you to do that same thing. I want you to touch your thumb to your finger, thumb to your index finger, thumb to your uh, ring finger, thumb to your middle finger, but do it in your mind. So close your eyes and just picture yourself doing this in your mind. The science of neuroplasticity says that as you do that in your mind, it's literally your brain is firing as if it's actually doing it. That's just in the brain, the visualization of the brain. 
And when we visualize here in the brain, that does require some effort and ultimately we're giving energy or expelling energy towards creating something. But as we sink into the lower levels of the heart or of the subconscious or of the spirit, uh, and when we learn to abide in the secret place of our heart, then what's actually happening is we are producing energy. We're raising our energy, producing energy. And this is where all the new stuff comes. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in the secret place, if any man be in the new man, if any man be in the divine nature, behold, all things become new. There is a continually new thing that is not only challenging the outside world, but a continually new thing that we're able to feel here, follow here, and therefore begin to manifest here. There's always new. This moment is new. Your body is new. Your mind is new. Your wealth is new. Think wealthy thoughts, manifest wealth. Think health thoughts, manifest health. But it has to, really it has to begin here. We have to change the way that we're living. About 10 years ago, I started shifting how I was living from a place of really the analytical mind, which was really working hard to get into the presence of God, to a place of, I had this experience that really shifted the whole mindset. And it's actually been shown that when you have these kind of out of body, mystical, metaphysical experiences, that you do change. Like your entire chemistry and makeup of yourself has changed. It's one of the reasons why there is supernatural healing. If you're actually sick or you're dealing with chronic sickness or depression, um, you can be healed of that immediately. It doesn't, it, you, you can walk through a process of healing, but you can also be healed immediately as a result of an experience. Those experiences, when they happen, the brain shifts and it actually changes all the chemical output. And one of the ways that we can actually begin to have these experiences, the best way to have these experiences is to learn to live from the heart and to let go of the analytical mind. This is where all the experiences are happening. So all of these experiences that we're talking about or that we've seen from mystics, whether those are Christian mystics or, you know, they're having these experiences in the secret place. He who dwells abides in the secret place of the Most High. The Most High is your true nature. He who dwells in the secret place. So I'm living from the inside secret place outwardly towards the world. Man, and it's so fucking beautiful. It really is such a beautiful existence. And this is how we move from a place of sabotaging ourselves. We want to create good things and we're thinking really hard about good things, but we're believing negative things about us. So I'm really trying to develop wealth and create wealth. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to create wealth. I'm going to create wealth. Today's going to be a good day. And I'm going to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to have created some wealth. But then we come home and we're like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I'm not creating the wealth that I wanted to create today. Things, it just doesn't seem like money's attracted to me. I don't know if I'll ever make it. Those thoughts are literally also seed that we're planting in the field of consciousness. And so now we're manifesting the, the, in the field of consciousness. I'm going to develop wealth and I'm always going to live in poverty. And when those two things, they're sabotaging. They're, it's sabotaging the wealth that we want to create. It's sabotaging the health that you want to create. You are a supernatural being. You're capable of literally whatever you set your mind and heart towards. There is nothing outside of your ability. You are innately divine, but you've begun to believe that you're not. According to your faith, let it be unto you. I want to encourage you right now to begin to shift the way that you think about yourself. You are not separate from God. You are one with God. There's a beautiful singular God. God is all and in all, filling all things everywhere. There's nothing from this tree that's behind me to your own flesh that is not God. And so when you realize that all things have come forth from and therefore are part of this divine consciousness now you have no more excuse to limit yourself in your thinking 
break the bonds today. If you need help or encouragement, reach out to me, man. Like I legitimately live in this place and my desire is to help you. My desire is to be here with you, to walk with you, to help you realize what you truly are. I just have a passion for you. I have a passion for beings to share what I live in and walk in and breathe in. So I hope this is an encouragement to you today. I know this is a shift from some of the things that I've been talking about, but I just really wanted to encourage you because this is the root, man. This is the root. The conceptions of ourselves as beings as separate from the divine life is the root of all of our problems and troubles. When you come back to a place of singular expression, everything shifts. Your entire world will be changed. Your entire body will be changed. Your personality can be changed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Letting go of those old things is key. Just because you lived in poverty doesn't mean you're going to continue to live in poverty. Just because you've lived in sickness doesn't mean you're going to continue to live in sickness. If you focus and consciously are aware of your sickness, you're going to continue to manifest sickness and pain. But when you consciously become aware of health, you're going to manifest health. I love you. I'm here with you. I stand with you. We are one. Have a beautiful fucking day. And remember, the more that you awaken to this reality, this inward life, the more that you play in this outer world.